Hey guys, welcome to Tech News Day, and this episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. It's an online styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, your budget, and your lifestyle. But let's get into the tech news. Yeah, crime sucks. Unless they're cool crimes, of course. Yeah. But what if there was a way to predict and stop crimes before they even happen? Uh, well, that's literally the premise of the 2002 movie Minority Report, based on the short story by Philip K. Dick, and if you know anything about Philip K. Dick's stories, you can safely assume that this idea is presented as dystopian and scary, because it is. Sure. Uh, anyways, over in the UK, which is already the surveillance capital of the world, they're working on something called the National Data Analytics Solution, or NDAS, which uses artificial intelligence to identify who in the UK is most likely to commit a crime or be the victim of one. The first name didn't do so well. They said, hey, how about final solution? They were like, ooh, 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 <laughs> nah. The final solution to crime. <laughs> yeah, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so they came up with that one and it was fine. And yeah, us. Yeah. Now, now, details about how exactly this will work are slim, probably because they don't want people to know. But uh, it, the existence of the system w was revealed this week by the publication New Scientist, and it apparently involves feeding an AI a shitload of data about roughly 5 million individuals already known to police and logged in their records from police departments across the UK, and uh, that's along with a ton of other statistical de data. These terabytes of data are then somehow processed, and then these known individuals are assigned risk scores based on how likely it is that they'll commit a crime or be a victim of a crime. That's fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> take your DNA and send it over to our labs, and we'll figure out if you are, first of all, Native American, or potentially the victim of a crime. Yeah, and then uh, you pull out your phone, you pull up freecrimescore.com. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm Free a 780. <laughs> This is a new market. Let's I married my dream girl. How do I invest in this? So unlike in Minority Report, though, uh, getting a high score for crime from this system doesn't mean that the cops can come and arrest you for something that you haven't even done yet. Yet. Uh, <laughs> instead, the, the people behind it say that it'll be used to provide support from local health or social workers. So, for example, if someone known by police to have a history of mental health problems gets tagged by the system as likely to commit a crime, they'll send social services over to check on how they're doing. On the victim side, if someone scores high on being likely to be exploited in human trafficking, for example, they'll also be visited by social services to... Hey, are you a slave? Blink. Blink, blink. blink. once if you're a slave. Yeah. She sounds like a big tactic to take my guns away when it comes over the, over the ocean. Well, the thing is, they already lost their guns. So oh, yeah, you yeah. might be onto something. Mm -hmm. Take my musket when you pry it from my cold, clammy hands. <laughs> a big factor in how the system will work seems to be linking people in the system to their known associates and family members who are also in the system. Now, basically, if a bunch of people in your social circle have been caught breaking the law lately, there's a good chance that you'll be committing crimes as well, or the be, be the victim of them. Uh, so on the one hand, this seems like it's basically the kind of stuff that police and social workers are doing already, uh, just way more advanced and requiring less manpower. On the other hand, though, uh, there's definitely some ethical issues here. Big time! Yeah, just a few. Uh, so the Alan Turing Institute, which is the UK government's official research institute for stuff like artificial intelligence, uh, they got a real good look at this system last year, and they have their own report about it coming sometime this week. But uh, new scientists got an early look at that report, and uh, it's not very positive. Uh, the Alan Turing Institute says that there are, quote, serious ethical issues with the system, and uh, they are particularly concerned about inaccurate predictions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, there's always problems and glitches, yeah. so. Yeah, uh, they question whether it's even in the public good to be going around intervening preemptively when someone hasn't actually committed a crime yet and might not even be committing any crimes in the future. Imagine how- Maybe you're gonna cause more trouble than there was. This is like a, it's like a, it's a, another Black Mirror thing. Uh, it, it, and it is, wouldn't it be like so stressful on you if you were like, a cop came and he's like, hey, did you, you, com you commit any crimes? You thinking about committing a crime? And it's no, just like, what? Wait, what? Wait, hold on. Fuck. Am I going to commit a crime? And then all your friends and family are like, oh, Ricky. He he's going to snap it. He got moment. visited by the pre-crime people. Yeah. It's like I a scarlet know. letter. Yeah. Like you, like your neighbors are like, oh, the fucking pre-crime people are over there. Yeah. Now they're going to be knocking on my door telling me I'm, I'm going to be a victim. And then like six years later, you get 10 cents in a class action lawsuit. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. Was Sorry. Like, we interact really. <laughs> but that's the whole thing is like, this is a literal snowball effect of stress for people that like, but potentially might not have ever committed the crime. Yeah. Get and, the whole neighborhood going nuts. And uh, yeah, particularly in places where you're probably already stressed out about yes, a lot of things. Yes, for the most part, I would assume that the people that this the will be... The people that are being targeted by this yeah. are not over on like High Street. No, no. Or Savile Row yeah. getting a 
New, new uh, suit, suit paint or something. <laughs> oh, me, oh my, I was about to rob this suit. <laughs> No, yeah. it's, it's, it seems like it's going to have uh, big implications. Yeah. Uh, there's so also... That's the issue of bias. Yeah, there's the issue of bias. It's a, it's a pretty difficult problem to fix when you're dealing with police data. Law professor Andrew Ferguson of the University of D.C. pointed out to new scientists that arrests correlate with where police are deployed and not where crime is. And meaning cops have a lot more data on the places they're, they're already patrolling and not a lot of data where they don't. So a system like this, it runs the risk of just harassing poor people and minorities even more than they potentially already are. Yeah, but one of the biggest motivations behind this is just the fact that the UK government has slashed police budgets quite a bit over the last few years, so they're just trying to use technology, specifically AI, to bridge that gap. <sighs> um, for what it's worth, um, they do say that they'll be working closely with the UK Information Commissioner's Office. Uh, that's their national data watchdog, to ensure that they're not breaking any privacy laws. Though, we're not really sure what that even means in a country that already has over 4 million security cameras. Like, what is privacy in the UK? Uh, in any case... You can't even make memes over there. Well, no, that's a Europe thing, and they're not GDPR, really... GDPR, you know, but... I, figure out that's going to be a couple this, months till we figure the whole there's thing out. There's a lot of... I don't... Um, yeah, yeah, we'll see. But uh, in any case, <laughs> here's something fun. Turns out we already have a similar system here in Los Angeles that focuses mainly on gangs. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, just anyone who lives adjacent to a gang. Oops, my fingers. Or might like, go to school with a gang. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm, we're only learning about this now because it's mentioned in this article about the UK system. So that's fun. Huh. Man, the future sucks. Yeah, especially <laughs> if you're poor. Yeah. Uh, now let's uh, let's move on. And uh, from that to some Elon Musk news. For a guy who's gotten in a, you know, a little bit of trouble over the past years for just talking way too much. He did a lot of talking over the past week. It was a holiday after all, mm -hmm. and, you know. Uh, he appeared on the Sunday night episode of Axios on HBO, and in that interview he stated that there's about a 70% chance that he'll be personally moving to Mars in his lifetime. But he rejects the idea that going to Mars will just be a way for the super rich to escape this shitty planet to survive somewhere else, and presumably not be surveilled, but mm -hmm. chances are you <laughs> no will No cameras on Mars. <laughs> the only place I can jerk off anymore, mm -hmm. Mars. Uh, anyways, <laughs> This isn't just going to be this for the super rich, because life on Mars is totally going to suck for quite a while before it can become a sought-after destination. Uh, he compared it to the early 20th century voyages to Antarctica, or climbing Mount Everest. You'd be struggling to survive in some very harsh conditions, spending most of your time working on staying alive, with the very real possibility of never returning home. So... But are there cameras? <laughs> it's you gotta you gotta you know whatever take a you long think time is more for valuable the cops to life. show up at my doorstep. Mm -hmm. I live on Mars. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm moving to Antarctica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in that same well, in Antarctica, that one guy stabbed the other guy. Well, that's yeah, he still got arrested. It's a risk. Now they're watching him. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, in that same interview, Musk talked about one of his several companies, uh, one that doesn't get a lot of press compared to Tesla or SpaceX or the Boring Company, Neuralink. Uh, that's the company he co-founded just two years ago to invent implantable brain-computer interfaces. In other words, Neuralink is trying to turn people into cyborgs. Uh, this has a lot of practical applications for people with disabilities, but Musk, of course, sees way beyond that, seeing brain-computer interfaces as humanity's only option for preventing an artificial intelligence doomsday scenario. If you can't beat them, join them. And in this case, um refers to the AIs that are going to eventually enslave us all. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, he says that like gorillas and other primates today, the AI beings of the future will push humans into small, isolated habitats, or even zoos. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, he also points out a bizarrely specific way that a person could use AI for evil right now today. Uh, you could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the face ID chip that's used in cell phones and having a small explosive charge in a standard drone and just have it do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram it into them, and explode. You can do that right now. No new technology is needed. Go! Oh, <laughs> cool! Have you done this before, Elon? Maybe. Look, I might have made a few drones to go over to Thailand to find that guy that said my submarine was bad, but there was no bombs on him. Yeah. There's I mean... A, the drones are just gonna look for evidence that he was a pedo. In typical Elon fucking getting blazed over, over the holiday weekend fashion, like, what if we are just advanced robot AI? Well, he does still, he still thinks it's possible we're What if, we, what if simulation. we killed all the scientists when we were invented, and then humans just, you know, oh. had a natural evolution system? But it's just, like, really fine-tuned shit. Like, your brain is just, like, that's just, it's just really fi fine-tuned shit up there that someone could have invented. I mean, we're basically machines. And now we're going to create machines that, that are going to kill us. Babies making babies. Mm-hmm. Anyways, also in that Axios interview, 
Musk explains Neuralink's goals further, saying that it'll democratize intelligence, making everybody super smart thanks to the fact that there will be a direct link between our minds and all the publicly available digital information on Earth. Well, the internet exists and it ruined everyone because of this reason. I know. Like, 10 years ago, I would have been like, yeah, if we just give everyone all the information that's out there, everyone will be smart and nobody will ever say anything that's wrong. But that has clearly over the past couple of years proven to be the opposite yeah, of uh, the truth. There is uh, very hard data of people just being ignorant on purpose. Yeah, like the, they gave us more information and somehow we became dumber. Yes. Which is, I mean, obviously no one it's such could a have human really thing. predicted that. You know that. what, we're not AI robots because that is such a fucking human thing to do. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> Doing literally the opposite of what whatever was invented and was intended for. Just fucking ruin it. Yeah, like this thing, you're going to jack yourself into the system and immediately be like, hey, did you know the Earth is flat? <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, I'm not lying because Hillary, I got the thing. Hillary's got a sex dungeon. Yeah. Is she at the edge of the Earth mm -hmm. where you can't get past. You can't get past. Where all the gold is. Mm -hmm. And they're hiding it from us <sighs> right now. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, uh, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> so there's Neuralink, this cybernetic, Shit, it would also allow people to store their memories in the cloud <laughs> where it's perfectly safe. Yeah. Uh, which would presumably solve diseases like Alzheimer's. Or just, you know, let someone log in and be like, where's the social security? There we go. And credit card number. And there we go. I mean, this is literally Black Mirror. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he says that he expects Neuralink's brain computer interfaces to be available in just about a decade. So. Cyberpunk 2028, here we come. I don't know if I actually want kids anymore. No, the future is scary. Yeah. Plus, I mean, yeah. It's, the, the, the future is a lot. It, it, there's very little to look forward to. Yeah, it all seems bad. It all seems bad. It feels or, like we got to like the good part with like cell phones and shit like that. And then it's like, what, 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 what do we need? Like, I just want to like f travel faster. That's cool. Yeah. Maybe get that done. Or safer, so you're not dying in car accidents and stuff like that. Yeah. Now it's like even, it's like, oh yeah, people with paralysis can walk, people with Parkinson's, they'll be cured. But uh, in order to get to that point, we're going to have to turn everyone into cyborgs. Yeah, yeah. No, we no. Can... Stop all that shit and yeah. then make like a little, uh, make it cheap to get the surgery done that just like blows your arteries out with all the cholesterol. Just like, Phew. hey, you're good for like another 20 years. You're not going to die of heart disease. I mean, you can die yourself. Just... Stick a straw in your heart. Yeah, just suck it out. It's just like a gas tank. Boop. Siphon it out. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Eat it twice. <laughs> uh, anyways, also in that same interview, Musk admitted that during Tesla's Model 3 production, essentially the company was bleeding money like crazy. And if we didn't solve these problems in a very short period of time, we would die. Which isn't all that surprising, except for the fact that this directly contradicts what Musk had been saying about Tesla while this was going on. Uh, he'd repeatedly said publicly during Model 3 production that Tesla was not running low on money and was not in need of any funding. So, I mean, here he is basically admitting that those earlier statements were flat out lies, which not really the best look for the CEO of a major company, but you know- Yes, I was lying then, but not lying now. None of that fucking matters anymore. Yeah. Like no one gives a shit, it's so fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Anyways, it, it also pretty much validates the Tesla short sellers who were betting against the company at the time, whom Musk frequently lashed out at publicly. Turns out you were all right, but uh, I got through it. But it didn't matter anyway. Yeah. Uh, so whatever, Tesla's financial woes, they seem to be pretty much over with for now. I think the biggest thing was like, they were like, ah, oh, shit, different colored paint costs more money? Fuck that, you can't just customize it for free. We're going to charge you. Like, yeah, duh, just do that. Yeah, a lot of... Uh... Yeah, a lot of rookie mistakes that the other car companies were probably laughing at. Did you hear? He was giving the pain away for free. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> Anyways, uh, also this week, Elon Musk said on Twitter while promoting some job openings at his companies, there are easier places to work, but nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week. Uh, and then when someone asked just how many hours one should work per week to change the world, Musk replied, Varies per person, but around 80 sustained, peaking above 100 at times. Pain level increases exponentially above 80. So this unsurprisingly <sighs> uh, ruffled a lot of feathers and got a lot of replies pointing out that expecting employees to abide by this ridiculous ethos was kind of fucked up, especially in an age when, you know, labor laws and income inequality in this country are not so great. Um, probably the best, most balanced reply, though, came from just some random user, this guy, Rotful, who wrote, Elon, look, I'm happy for you that you find satisfaction in your 80-plus-hour work week, but you've got to stop projecting that onto everyone else. 
Loving your job is a luxury, and if you have to work a shit job to survive, more than 40 hours is insanity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just hate you're this You're killing fucking... yourself to, to, you're literally killing yourself to live. Because you're killing yourself at this at, at a job, at presumably yeah. a job that you don't like, uh, for 60, 80, 100 hours a week, to afford a small living compartment that you go to and sleep in to wake up and go to yeah. work again. And then you fucking, all these companies like this, they have, you get your food at your work, you do your banking yeah, at your work. Yeah, they don't want you, you do, Yeah, you do everything it's at like your work. It's like the old company store. And it's like, yeah, if you own a company, Put in as many hours as yeah, you fucking you want, want to be because successful. that's yours yeah. and how successful that company is is directly correlated to how successful you but are. You want your employees to be happy. Uh, yeah. Like at least or, or content with their lives. It's like, and it's, it's you know, like completely different scale, but like that whole Telltale Games thing and yeah. like the gaming industry where it's just like, yeah, we're a family here. Like we're all in this together. Everyone come in and work a hundred hours. Oh, by the way, uh, we're out of money. Get out of here. Bye. No severance. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, I guess it, it's, it is good to be proud of your work for doing sure. such a hard and rigorous job. But if it's your job, work, like if yes. I'm fucking painting, spraying paint on a fucking car, yeah. like I'm not changing the world, I'm painting a car. Yeah. You're changing the world, I guess, but like leave me the fuck out of that. Like yeah. I'm doing manual labor over here. Yeah, just hire another person and don't pay me overtime and let me live my life on a salary that's manageable. Yeah. 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 I don't know. We're probably wrong and we're not fit for this. So whatever. <laughs> and even more Elon Musk news, he's apparently being investigated by NASA because he smoked some weed on Joe Rogan's podcast. Like this, it seems ridiculous. It's, I think it's fucking dumb. Like, I don't give a shit that he smoked weed. Yeah. Uh, it, it does seem ridiculous though, especially since Musk, he barely even looked like he inhaled. It was, it was more funny that the meme was funnier than him actually getting high. Yeah. The, him looking at it like, <laughs> what is this mysterious smoking stick? Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I guess them's the rules. Uh, cannabis, it's still classified as illegal on a federal lever, level, but is it is it illegal in space? I don't know. I'd have to check space law. So uh, NASA's workplace rules, they do forbid that. Now, on the national security side, it's also prohibited for someone with a security clearance like Elon Musk to be using illegal drugs. The whole thing is fucking stupid. It's legal in so many states, like full on legal now. It's legal medicinally in so many fucking yeah. states. And y y all the people writing these fucking laws are hopped up on all kinds of drugs all the time anyway. Yeah. Prescription drugs. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. fucking Jeff Sessions. Well, all right, not RIP, but he's no longer in charge. <laughs> no, he, he died <laughs> smoking a joint. But yeah, he's up there like making sure we're still raiding dispensaries. And then he goes to bed and like sticks a fucking fentanyl patch on yeah, the back. Yeah, something like that, like, yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's, it is dumb. Uh, we sound like fucking hippies on this episode, but Jesus Christ, come on. Now, this investigation, it's going to be a big waste of time and resources. And whether or not Elon Musk smokes weed has absolutely nothing to do with how safe our government's secrets are or whether a rocket launches properly. But Elon probably should have thought about that before he smoked weed on a live podcast. Now, I will say, I don't understand why they're like giving him such a hard time for this when he readily admits that he is not sleeping well and that actually does have a huge negative yeah. effect on your brain. It's, it's equivalent to uh, drug impairment at yes. a certain point. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, look, the, the only reason they're doing this is because they have pressure from the government. Well, not even that. It's like they have a set of rules across their company that supposedly apply to everyone. Yeah. And if they don't treat this as seriously as they would if it was anyone else who isn't famous and going on podcasts, then they look like hypocrites. Tell me fucking one person at NASA that hasn't smoked a joint in their life. How else are you going to come up with all these fucking answers to complex problems? I, I, I agree. <laughs> the, it, should, it just shouldn't be illegal. The first person like, that was like, but NASA doesn't a, write the let's laws. launch a rocket into space was they smoked weed. They definitely were on some kind of drug where they were like, we should go to the fucking moon. Yeah. I mean, all, all I really care about is like, you know, the guy fucking like building the rockets yeah, or yeah. launching yeah, yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah. They, they should make be sure sober. The, the safety checks are in place for <laughs> like, sure. Yeah, but... Anything that could lead to disaster, those yeah. people should be sober. But like, I don't give a fucking shit. Even those people, if they go home at night and like smoke yeah. or drink, like yeah. who cares? It's fine. Anyways. <laughs> But speaking of space, though, uh, this week, seven months after being launched into space, NASA's InSight lander successfully touched down on Mars and sent back some pics. <laughs> so, you up, Earth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, Mars is still brown, it's still flat, and it's still filthy. Mm -hmm. uh, InSight's mission going forward to use a, is to use a bunch of instruments to take measurements of what's going on inside the planet underground. It's basically going to finger 
Mars and get an idea of like how it evolved to be how it is how today. How many sex dungeons are under that? Yeah, it's gonna like so like we don't know if there's earthquakes on, earthquakes on Mars because we haven't sent sensors up there to check on that. So it's gonna check if there's any kind of seismic activity, and uh, they're also gonna figure out whether Mars's core is liquid or solid. Ooh, I think people are gonna want to drink chocolate. it. Yeah, they're gonna want to drink it. Ooh, Ooh liquid <laughs> Mars water. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Insight is now the third piece of NASA machinery that is currently gathering data on Mars. It's a very lonely planet. Yeah, imagine how much of a buzzkill it's going to be for Elon if it's like, yeah, there's like 9.8 earthquakes every day. <laughs> yes, uh, I'll have to adjust my percentage Ooh. numbers. <laughs> He'll start another company to stop earthquakes immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Seems like we need to tunnel to the center of Mars and reset the core. Yes. Like in the film, <laughs> The Core. <laughs> <laughs> I shit on the ground to grow potatoes. My name is Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of Mars uh, and the possibility of eventually living there, if there's no gigantic earthquakes every day, a big obstacle to that has always been hauling up all the tools and materials you need to actually settle there. The European Space Agency, however, recently tested out uh, one possible solution to that by 3D printing various machine parts using Mars dirt. Uh, every trip to Mars so far has been one way so uh, science, scientists can only assume what the dirt on Mars is actually like based on measurements made by the Spirit and Opportunity rovers. So the dirt used in this 3D printing test is based on those measurements and also actual space dust brought back from the moon. Now, to turn this dust into a reliable solid material, they've developed a binding agent that hardens the dust when it's exposed to light. They print extremely thin layers of objects individually using this binding agent, then stack the layers together in an oven to create the final piece. Now, there's still a lot of testing that needs to be done on how reliable these parts really are, and they still aren't 100% sure what Mars's dirt is really like, but this potentially solves one of the biggest problems attached to colonizing Mars, and I am looking forward to their appearance on Shark Tank. Look at this, <laughs> a pile of dirt. And useless, now, right? And now a toy car. And Mr. Wonderful's like, but what are your margins? Tell me your margins, <laughs> spit them out. Two million, and then Cuban's like, cut, four million. <laughs> yeah. I'm richer than the rest of you. I could put it up for sale in the Maverick Stadium. I, I, I bet over my other sharks just to make them feel bad. Mm -hmm. It's a fun show. Yeah. Uh, anyways, oh yeah, hey, this episode is sponsored. Uh, and it's time for a word about that sponsor. It is Stitch Fix. They are an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, your budget, and your lifestyle. I got the pair of shoes I'm wearing right now, one of my favorite pairs of pants that I wear quite often. I wore a lovely green fix. button down the other night and my fiance said, you look nice. Wow, and that's all that matters. That's a big compliment. Because mm -hmm. I usually look, I look like this all the time. Yeah, wow. Uh, so yeah, go over to stitchfix.com slash newsday, give them your sizes, tell them what styles you like and don't like and how much you're willing to spend on each item and they will take that information pair you up with your own personal stylist, and that stylist will then handpick items for you to send right to your door. You're gonna look so good on Christmas. Guys, come on. You wanna look good for the parents, for mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. You wanna let them, give, give them that perceived success. Uh, <laughs> when your big box of clothes, uh, when they come in the mail, you try them on, you look in the mirror, uh, you show it off, <laughs> you decide which items you wanna keep and which ones you don't, and then you send the ones that you don't wanna keep back. Uh, shipping, exchanges, and returns, they're always free. There's no subscription required. Uh, you can sign up to receive scheduled shipments, or you can just get your fix whenever you want. Stitch Fix's styling fee, it's only $20, and that's applied towards anything you keep from your shipment. So get started now at stitchfix.com slash newsday, all one word, and you're gonna get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash newsday to get started today stitchfix.com slash newsday, or just click, click the link in the description. Click on the link. Now, back into the news. Uh, here's some shitty news. So the Trump White House obviously doesn't really give a shit about climate change, nor do they even officially believe in nor it. Nor does he know the difference between climate and weather. A lot of people seem to have that problem. How can the climate be changing if I'm holding snow in my hand? Yes. Checkmate. Luckily, though, our federal government is made up of numerous agencies who actually trust the opinions of scientists, the vast consensus of whom believe that climate change is a serious threat to the future of our planet. So since the year 2000, a simpler time, those various federal agencies have cooperated on national climate assessments, which are published every couple of years. And the latest edition was released by the White House this past Friday. That was convenient. While everyone was busy sleeping off their Thanksgiving hangover and Black Friday shopping. Spending time with their families, hmm. not sitting on the computer. Hmm. 
Yeah, governments and politicians often release information they're not too happy about on Friday nights. Uh, that is actually what is known as a Friday night news dump. Uh, so there's a lot less attention paid to it, obviously. But releasing this climate report on Black Friday takes it to a whole nother level because, surprise, the prognosis, as you could assume, is bad. Oh man. Also, the timing may have actually backfired because with most of the government closed for the holiday weekend, news networks had a lot more space to fill talking about this climate report. And, uh, you know, it's bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah. So according to the report, climate change is going to cost the United States hundreds of billions of dollars by the end of the century unless global greenhouse gas emissions are substantially reduced. Stop me if you've heard any of this before. Yeah. Uh, and uh, speaking of the cost, there are many timely examples of why that is. Natural disasters. Stop. I, I heard of those before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, natural disasters, uh, for example, I don't know, uh, the, the worst wildfire in modern California history that literally just happened and is still being dealt with. Those are exacerbated by climate change and are very expensive to deal with. Mm -hmm. Climate change will also seriously fuck up our agricultural productivity and the availability of fish. Uh, international trade will also increasingly cost more because you know shipping things is a lot more expensive when you got to avoid natural disasters and all the infrastructure is fucked up. Mm -hmm. There will also be an increase in heat-related deaths and pollution will exacerbate respiratory problems like asthma. Bugs like ticks and mosquitoes will be able to thrive in a lot more places. We had them fucking th here this year. Yeah. I left Florida to get away from them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> This is going to obviously increase the risk of diseases like Lyme disease in West Nile. So that's fun. Yay. Uh, there's lots of other fun side effects of climate change in this very thorough report, but it does offer a solution. Stop putting all those greenhouse gases in the air by switching to renewable energy sources. Yeah, I've heard that one too. It seems like a no brainer, but step one is admitting that the problem actually exists. And the head of our government, he hasn't gotten that far. Uh, so I don't know, who do, who do you want to trust? Uh, the guy who stared directly into the sun or the people who landed a, a rover on Mars? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he saw something in the sun we're not supposed to see. Don't tell him about my, my evil plans. His yeah. tweet was insane. It was just like, got more of that cold weather coming. So much, for, could use some of that. Uh, global warming right about now. Gonna be real cold out, everyone. He also tweeted this week how like- It's a dad joke. By yeah, the way. yeah, a bad dad joke. Yeah, a, a shitty dad joke. He also tweeted this week that uh, he wants to start a like government-funded propaganda news network yeah, to the, show the around the world. Global news network, yeah. But which is like ridiculous. But he also like is apparently unaware that there are already like three or four existing government-funded international news yeah, outlets. Yeah. They're just not propaganda outlets, but there's like uh, you know, radio, oh, Radio Free Europe. Uh, there Air are America. some propaganda ones. Yeah, yeah, but like. He wants to take it to a whole new level. Yeah, he well, he like because he wants to just be like, here's how great America is, like just only good news. You know, people make fun of him for just watching Fox News all the time, but I bet he makes a little time for Russia Today. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, two more years to vote again. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, but finally, in some good news, Google has announced that their Project Fi mobile carrier is going to be opening up to even more phones this week. And Project Fi was initially exclusive to just Pixel and Nexus devices, but later expanded to include a few phones from Motorola and LG probably because they worked with them on a lot of those Nexus and the best deals. Uh, this week, they, they will be reportedly adding support for phones from Samsung, OnePlus, and Apple. Wow. Yeah. yeah. The, the whole pitch for Project Fi is that it's simple and straightforward. You pay $20 a month for unlimited call, calls and texts and $10 a month per gigabyte with free data after six gigs and some throttling, throttling after 15 gigs. Uh, but the reason that, I mean, that sounds expensive to someone like me because I use a ton of data, yeah. uh, but I have an un unlimited plan. Uh, but the thing with Project Fi is it automatically connects to Google secure Wi-Fi networks that they've gone through a database and approved yeah. so that you're actually on Wi-Fi a lot more than you think you are. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of evens out and you pay less, correct? Off of what you usually paid? Before? Yeah. Well, but well, yeah. Yeah, way less, and it's, I just, I like it because... You can just go to it, if you go to a different country or something like that. Yeah, it's international working. travel, it's also like simple, like I understand my bill. It's yeah. not like, my old company was Verizon, and like, it's just so fucking, I hate dealing with, a, like I just want one thing, and they're like trying to fucking upsell me all the yeah. time, trying to like, hook me into some crazy deal with a bunch of like footnotes on it that are actually fucking me in the ass. Yeah. Like, no, just, 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 I just want to use a phone. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I like it. Um, and uh, yeah, if you're tired of your carrier yeah. and uh, just want something simple and easy and good for traveling to other countries, check it out. Yeah. <laughs>
do it for like a fucking month and then like cancel it. You can cancel yeah. it anytime. Yeah, right? there's, yeah, there's no you can, contracts. You can keep your, that's what I was thinking about doing, keeping my plan and trying Project Fi and seeing how a month went and then just yeah. like throwing the SIM card away when I was done if I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, that's it for our show. Please uh, please go to uh, our merch store, uh, internettoday.threeblack.com. Oh, uh, yeah. There'll be a link in the description as well. Buy yourself, that merch. You have till Friday to grab some merch. The response has been incredible so far, so thank you all so, so much for the incredible response. I've already talked to the merch company that's handling this, and we are probably going to be doing one for spring, I guess. Yeah. I don't know about seasons. We don't really have them here, but spring sounds like something fun. So maybe we'll do another merch drop either before then or by then. But thank you so much for the response. And uh, please do watch. Uh, where were we yesterday, Elliot? We were over at Attack Media's studios. Uh, we did a little Monday live stream with Kevin Pereira, mm -hmm. Mr. Attack of the Show himself. Um, yeah. So watch that. And... Um, uh, maybe also watch uh, the episode we did. We did a podcast with him two weeks ago, but it just went up as well. Yeah. So it's three and a half hours of uh, chock full of content. Us and Kevin Pereira just shooting the shit. Yeah. So enjoy that. We'll see you guys next time. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.